All right. Well, welcome, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining our session on Forging a Connected Global Critical Community Psychology. My name is uh, Dr. Natalie Kibble. I'm an assistant professor of community psychology at Wilfrid Laurier University. I know many of you and hope to meet the rest of you throughout the next hour. Um, I have two of our co-presenters here with me, I think just two at the moment, um, Chris Zahn and Monica Medyadengram. And we have uh, maybe joining us, or if not, um, at least working on the project with us, Garth Stevens from South Africa and Marianne Dar Gray from Chile. That, I'm not missing anybody, right? And then we have institutional support from other places, but those are kind of the five core partners that have been working on with us as we put this project together. And so we're really here to launch our proposed global knowledge exchange and global critical community psych network. Um, we're really excited to be doing that at ICCP, such a wonderful relational space already. And the hope today is to kind of give you an overview of what we've been up to and what we're planning. Um, but because we're still in such a formative stage of this project to get feedback from you, thoughts on how we can really kind of, you know, learn from past processes of building global relationships and all of all, all these such things. So I'm just going to start with a short overview um, of our proposed project. Um, this global knowledge exchange, which is going to consist of bringing together critical community psychology scholars, practitioners, and students through global gatherings throughout the year, throughout the 2021 year at least, um, but obviously hopefully beyond, um, to develop our global networks and to collectively curate a critical community psychology podcast to integrate and mobilize our theories and practices within and across the global regions that are represented um, with community psychology. Um, so after I've presented this overview, I promise I won't talk for very long because we mostly want to hear from all of you. I'm going to open it up to Chris and Monica to, to hop in and introduce themselves and talk a little bit about what kind of attracted them to this project and what they hope to will come out of this project. Um, and then we want to spend the rest of the session hearing from you. We want to, you know, get some feedback. Um, if you have any questions, we can answer questions and then really engage in a dialogue about how we can go about building a global relationship across all of these time zones and languages and spaces, um, but also have some brief conversations about what critical community psychology means to you, um, how we can kind of build our collective capacity to, to impact transformative change in, in our respective regions. Um, so when we say critical community psychology, I'm only going to say this briefly because there probably isn't one agreed upon definition of critical community psychology, but just to ground the conversation, I just want to say that we're really categorizing this as like an umbrella term of a number of politically radical responses to, to social change and differences from a traditional community psychology. Um, so this might include liberation psychology, a decolonial and indigenous community psychology, uh, community psychologies that are driven by critical race theory or black feminist thought, that really just the, the, the ways in which we're doing community psychology, but infusing and working from critical orientations in our work. Um, I kind of see critical community psychology as having as its goal, like a reimagining and a reconstructing of how we live and build and relate to each other in our communities while addressing the injustices in those communities. So we're really trying to figure out how all of those who are doing this kind of work can connect and, and learn from each other. But as we all know, we are a very small field. Um, we're isolated across geography, language, knowledge mobilization spaces, the theoretical uh, epistemological, practical, methodological advances that are happening in all of our regions are not always being disseminated um, or developed in a systematic way across those regions where we can really be in dialogue with each other. So this presented this unique opportunity for what we're hoping will be an innovative knowledge mobilization process to increase our collective capacity to do, to do our work. Um, I do want to give a shout out to all the people that are doing such great works in the last decade. You know, we've got two global journals that are, they're doing a lot of great work to disseminate knowledge. We've got the ICCP, which has been bringing people together across these global regions. And we're really not, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We want to kind of build on the energy that already exists so that we can harness a lot of this relationality kind of through and beyond these conferences and between conferences. Um, so that said, we have submitted a grant. Um, to the Canadian Social Sciences Council uh, with the hope of funding um, this project. And the project is really going to be twofold. So the, the first piece is, is having some a series of virtual gatherings where we can come together, um, facilitate dialogues on ways that we, you know, identifying and synthesizing our theoretical and methodological advances, 
Um, but through this process, identifying some commonalities and divergences in our work so that we can build um, what we're proposing as a 16 episode, probably a two season podcast on critical community psychology. It will be multilingual. Um, we'll aim at mobilizing the advances that are happening in each of our regions in a really engaging and accessible way so that we can not only learn from each other, but create like a broader engagement with the, the general public, um, you know, people outside of community psychology who are potentially community engaged researchers or organizers or people who are leaders in their community or doing grassroots work in their community. Um, I can say a little bit more about kind of like how we're imagining this playing out, but most of it's a proposal at this point. We, we want to work with everyone to decide what are the important things that we, we want to focus on. So because it was a grant, we had to, to kind of lay it out. So we have proposed episodes based in regions with each region really kind of digging into their own, the way CCP plays out in their kind of unique historical and sociopolitical context. We have um, intersecting thematic episodes around, you know, how do we learn about, you know, community psychology through indigenous ways of knowing across different settler colonial states. So there are proposals of what this might look like, but today is really the, the beginning of having that, that broader conversation. So just in closing, um, the only thing I want to remember to say is that lots of people have been supporting this, and I want to just give a shout out to, to people before I pass it off to my co-presenters, that we were able to get institutional support, um, either in kind um, or through actual cash support, if we're able to move this project forward um, from Victoria University and the Institute of Health and Sport. Thanks, Chris. Um, from the Psychological Society of South Africa, um, from Mohirua at the University of Waikato, uh, from the Pontific Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile with Marianne Dar Gray, um, and from the Université de Quebec à Montréal in Canada. Um, and then we also got um, letters of support from SCRA and from the Center for Community Research, Learning and Action. So we're really looking at having like a global network of people um, helping to build these connections and curate the connections so we can learn and grow together, but then having a broad network of dissemination so that we can have an impact um, beyond hopefully the bounds of our field. Um, and I'm not sure how this didn't end up in my little speech, but one of the core things that we're really trying to do is center Black, Indigenous, and people of color voices, as well as emerging scholars and um, other historically marginalized scholars with the goal of amplifying voices that we aren't hearing necessarily to the same extent in our journals or at our conferences, um, and how can we highlight and build the relationality between um, you know, students, emerging, and BIPOC scholars across the different regions. I'm just gonna end there for now. Um, and I'd love to hear from Chris and Monica a little bit about kind of their perspectives on the project, and then we'll open it up to hear from, from all of you about why you're here. Yeah. Okay, uh, thanks Natalie. I think maybe Monica, uh, you might want to go first because I know you have to leave for your next session. Okay, Chris, thank you. Uh, thank you, Natalie, and good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm joining from Yogyakarta, Indonesia, and also thank you, Natalie, for connecting us uh, through this very interesting proposal, collaborative uh, project proposal. Um, I think uh, what I really like about the proposed project is that um, it it offers a promising platform for uh, forging in, uh, inclusive connections and conversations uh, among us, like those who have interest in, in um, the area, what's so-called critical community psychology. And I think it's, um, it will be a, a quite an alternative platform compared to what we usually have here in Indonesia, because uh, usually we have people. Uh, sorry, it's it's my computer says that uh, my speaker doesn't work properly. Is there any problem of getting my uh, voice, everyone, or does it come it's a through? Right? Like Chris was yesterday, but we can hear you, so I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, so usually we have uh, we have people coming to talk to us about how to do psychology, but this platform 
uh, instead of having that, that types of uh, conversation, I think it will be about how we talk to each other, uh, drawing on what, uh, what we've, been, uh, we've been doing, uh, either as scholar, as activists, um, to, to have a kind of a scholarly reflections on uh, what we, we've been doing in our own area of activism. So uh, there, there will be, uh, in, in preparing the, the proposal, I discuss and uh, probably I might say it's, it's a, uh, a collaborative uh, ideas between three of us. Uh, the other colleague, uh, I think um, you probably um, met him in one of the session, uh, Diki Pelopesi, is a community psychologist uh, from University of Indonesia. Uh, I think he liked to bring into the conversation about his reflection as a scholar and activist in the area of um, uh, disaster uh, recovery. Uh, he works, um, he has an, an extensive experiences of working with displaced uh, people um, the, uh, that happened because of the, the disasters in Indonesia. Uh, and the other colleague uh, will be Johnny uh, Yulianto. Uh, he's an Indonesian-based social psychologist uh, currently doing his doctoral study in Messe University of Land, New Zealand. Uh, his works, um, particularly uh, interrogating the, uh, the inter-ethnic relation issues in Indonesia with continued to be sites for social tensions, domination, marginalization, and discrimination in people's everyday life. And myself, um, uh, other than working in university, uh, I involved in disability movement, disability activism in Indonesia. So I'd like to bring my uh, reflections from that field into the conversation. Uh, so yeah, I, I think because uh, what so-called community psychology is more like an emerging field in Indonesia. Uh, so three of us, I think in the last, uh, few months sort of initiating this, this um, circle of community psychology or those who have interest in, in uh, building connections around uh, this type of psychology. And it will be great if uh, we can have this project as a platform to have broader engagement with those in other countries and areas uh, who, who like to engage in this kind of uh, conversation. And I have to mention, uh, there's also uh, one of my colleagues who's uh, worked uh, at the same university with me joining us now, Eduard Theodorus. Uh, probably he also like to add his uh, views on this uh, uh, proposing project. So I think I'd like to start with that, Natalie, and over to you, Chris. Thank you. Oh, th thanks, Natalie. Uh, look, I've got only, only uh, a couple of things to say, I guess. Um, Natalie, there's maybe a, a little bit, I mean, there's, as with most of these things, there's always a longer history. And so I, I probably just want to, to add that we've, we've had lots of conversations, I think that included um, uh, Todd, Todd Sloan, uh, before his untimely timely passing, around uh, thinking about uh, critical community psychology, and um, and he had developed a website and was uh, trying to connect people all <clears throat> all over in terms of bringing this this sort of resource uh, together. Um, and Scott Evans, who's also in the audience, he had also been um, quite uh, pivotal in in those um, discussions. And so we did um, submit a interest group. Uh, proposal to to describe as well. So we've got some some leg in um, initiating um, and organizing within that that space as well. 
but then Natalie with uh, her amazing um, vision and the skills that she had developed as a radio host that Radioactive when she was at the University of Miami had had, had probably given us a sort of a, a, a vision about what this could be and I know that a lot of the uh, the podcasts that she had produced are actually sitting on the SCRA website as uh, instructional resources um, around a series of topics um, and includes a whole number of um, uh, people who uh, have been laying foundations around uh, different theories, applications, putting us pause. Uh, maybe Natalie's interfering with the recording there. <laughs> I'm gonna blame someone. So, so I think that's uh, that's part of the uh, the other discussion. And I think uh, I mean the other um, thing that I saw as as a possibility, and I think it only came about uh, partly because of COVID, and we had to go online, was the fact that we actually are in the process of, and not not by design, really developing a digital archive of the of 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 this conference. And I think which is actually very different to what we had done in the past, but it won't necessarily replace the fact that we still have to have to write and produce um, um, other forms of outputs and so forth. Um, but we have, well, but I hadn't imagined, hadn't imagined that. So, so this, this, this podcast, the series, uh, I think is part of uh, alternative ways, I guess, of, of, of inserting um, various community psychologies from, from different places around the world into uh, into conversation with each other um, through these new technologies that we that that's bringing us all closer, I think, in some sorts of ways, and and makes conversations a little bit more more possible. It, it doesn't um, it doesn't delay them uh, with two year two year gaps in, in in between or one year gaps in between uh, across our uh, uh, across our different uh, places. So, so I think from that sort of perspective, we also. Looking at, I know that Peter Strike is in in the audience too, and Peter has been developing <coughs> um, ways of uh, capturing and making community psychology uh, prominent and visible um, in our context, and I'm sure that lots of other people have too. So we're also looking in in our own context too about, I mean, how and who will we speak with, and we're looking to to, to decenter um, the academic voice in this, but to start from the other side um, to have conversations around ideas and to bring them into conversation with, um, in, into dialogue really, um, between that university and community space. So, so I think we, we're sort of um, thinking about all of those sorts of possibilities that, um, that we have at our, um, at our disposal right now for, um, to, to respond to that question when people say, well, what is community psychology? And then, and then what is critical community psychology? So I hope that this is something that will, that will, um, uh, I, I guess uh, provide provide uh, provide another language and another sort of platform and another accessibility um, to the discourse and practices of community side. Okay. Thanks, Monica and Natalie. Yeah, thank you, Monica and Chris, for for giving some kind of foundation and history and depth to to what it is that we're talking about and. Uh, I'm looking around thinking some of you are already involved in this in some ways. Um, one thing I didn't talk about is the funding is going to fund a global graduate student collective. So we'll have, I think it works out to about a thousand hours worth of graduate student um, work um, that will be about building their own relationships and building graduate student networks um, and curating the episodes. So Sam and Rama are both involved in that. Um, we also had to have people volunteer to be pretend episodes for the grant. So Tiffany has been part of some of these conversations and hopefully will turn into something. Ermi, who's on the panel uh, in, in a few minutes is on, is on this. So I feel like it's one of those things, the same thing I felt with Radioactive. People want to talk about their work. They want to integrate their learning with, with other people. I think as academics, it's part of our nature. And so having, um, you know, concerted spaces for these dialogues, it's not hard to find people to fill the space. I think the interesting thing is finding the people we don't know yet. And I like that the way that we've built this partnership across different global regions is we now know leaders or emerging folks from those regions that are well connected locally so that our, our network can go deeper and, and further and engage students and, and really kind of engage in a sustainable and ongoing way with the hope of having kind of enough support at the front end to build something that, that will be lasting going forward. Um, I would love to just kind of open it up at this point to, to questions. 
Um, and then, you know, we have some questions for you as well in terms of where should we go from this and next steps. But first, does anyone just have any questions or, or a kind of initial thoughts that they want to share with the, the group? Well, hi. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to say this is really exciting. I, I had no idea that this was being done. Um, I was trained in global mental health. That was sort of my area. And it's kind of weird how I landed in criti critical community psych sort of by way of global mental health. Because in a way, a lot of what they're exporting is very westernized, at least in most of its practices. And I think that a lot of the like unjust relations that you see at a, at like you that play on the international field, you see it in the way that knowledge is produced within global mental health. And I think now there's more critique around it. There's like a book called Decolonizing Global Mental Health, but I thought it is a lot of cookies. By the way, I'm like <laughs> there's there's so many cookies. That's why I'm always on mute. Um, but. Anyway, so I've been actually talking to people in um, Africa mental health group in Kenya, and I was recently asking them, like, can we write something about power and privilege? And I don't know if that's necessarily like where, so I'm just excited to be with scholars that are thinking about the same questions internationally and, and just thinking about what kind of conversations that'll bring about. And, um, but also in my, being drawn towards global work. Now I want to do a lot of local work because I feel like that's often what leads to more depth. So that's why I'm in Puerto Rico, my home. And, and I'd love to think about people who could be like uh, in the radio show and the podcast that are doing like grassroots activist work and are really thinking about how to, um, like the mutual aid center people who are thinking really, how do we do process work that is equitable for all and in the process is also healing for all, for more people so i think it's really exciting and i'm happy to to contribute and help so thank you for organizing this thanks isabel and for the birds <laughs> and and the, it reminds me of something that came, so we've been having some pre-planning conversations even though we are spread across the globe so it led to real early mornings for me and late nights for other people and um I think it was Garth that shared something about how, you know, we historic we have all developed psychology and now community psychology and then critical community psychology from our own histories and sociopolitical context. And there's these really unique nuances to how things happen. But now the kind of global north has picked up on things like decolonial frameworks and are like trying to sell them back to, to spaces that have been working in developing and theorizing about these frameworks for decades. And so how can we learn from each other? And like Monica said, not just come in and say, I'm gonna teach you how to do critical community psychology or I'm gonna train you, but how do we across emerging and leading regions of the field dialogue, discuss, challenge, push each other, you know, think about how we connect and, and diverge so we can learn about, you know, this wide range of practices that are being enacted across the globe. Anybody else have a question or a comment? All right, I'll break the Zoom silence. That's become the, the, the running narrative of this conference. Um, okay, well then, you know, we have some questions because we've been, this has been our little kind of brainchild for the last many months. Um, and I think regardless of funding, um, we will be moving forward with a lot of this because so much of it we feel is necessary, especially the, you know, starting the network, um, bringing people together. Um, what are people's experiences of doing this that, that, you know, either show what are red flags coming up for you? Like, oh my goodness, how are we ever going to get people from 24 time zones in the same place who all speak different languages? Like we have challenges, real challenges to making this happen. Um, or, you know, any um, ideas for, for how you might want to see this um, come to where you are or, or engage kind of voices where you are.
Peter, I think you are muted, or at least I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, we have a community of practice in Australia with the Australian community psychologists on the last Thursday of every month. Um, and the way we went about it was fairly loose and um, gung-ho. So we, we put the date out, we just um, put the invitation out to people and whoever came were able to participate. So I think sometimes we can delay proceedings just by over, over calculating it. Um, so sometimes just going for something and, and plucking a date out and putting invitations out might be a good way to start. And then we can finesse it and fine tune it beyond that. It's not the ideal method, but it, it's one that we found works pretty well. Thanks, I appreciate that. And I think you're probably right that, you know, it's one, so one of the questions that has come up is like, where do we host it, right? Chris mentioned we have a um, critical community psych interest group at Scraw, but that's not a place that, that a lot of people are or, or want to be um, from the, you know, the rest of the globe. And so, you know, how do we kind of leverage some of the spaces we already have and some of the relationships we already have, but also be somewhere where, you know, everyone would want to and be able to to join us, I think is something we've been thinking through. Amanda, did you want to, to jump in? Yeah, I just, um, I agree with what Peter said. And also I would like to say what a brilliant idea this is. Uh, I'd be particularly interested in what you said before about languages. And that is a real issue in terms of, um, you know, we just accept that English is the language and everybody else has to speak English. And I would like to extend that thought in terms of how we publish. It's mostly English as well. And it's somehow a tyranny that we expect people from other cultures to really struggle to try to publish. But that goes the same as we, if we have meetings online, um, how, how do we facilitate other languages, the nuances of it? Um, I'm part of the GLOW network and Chris might be familiar with uh, Stu Carr and his project GLOW which is on living wages and we collaborate a lot with the UK and other countries as well and I think what Peter said before is just yeah you have to set a date and a time and to see who turns up. I think that that would be a start perhaps anyway. But good luck. It's really a great project. Thanks, Amanda. I think that's a really important uh, and actually mentioned some things that I don't think we'd, we'd thought about yet. So in the, the, the grant proposal, we have built in funding to have all of the podcast transcribed and then translated into Spanish and French. Um, and hopefully could leverage more resources for other language if necessary. And so the hope is that they will be recorded um, both as audio, but also as videos, so that the video part could, sorry, I don't know if you can hear my daughter playing with her toys in the background, but it's very distracting for me. <laughs> um, so uh, that they would be uh, able to have um, closed captioning that's transcribed into to multiple languages. So you could either listen to it as a podcast, mo most likely in English, um, or you could watch a video with um, translation um, that would happen. But then we're also gonna be proposing a special issue in the community psychology and global perspectives where there will be um, like full transcripts and translations and accessibility. The idea was that those were the three main languages that would be partnering in the grant, but that we wanted to be able to leverage resources beyond that if necessary. And so there will be graduate students doing that work with the hope that they have, um, you know, the framing and, and able to do the meaning making of translation within a critical community psychology orientation. But the one thing you flagged for me that we haven't thought about was live translation during the, the gatherings. And that's something to, to be thinking about like they've been doing at the, this conference. I, I don't know, so, something that I was just thinking of and I don't know if this sort of fits in, but like, I guess, um, you know, often sort of when you're connecting in with people um, sort of through online platforms and, and, and things like that, you know, it's a, a very sort of, you know, individual sort of your choice to sort of connect you know, for, for a bigger group, but whether, because there's a lot of people that are, you know, place-based connecting in with, with smaller groups and doing um, these kinds of work, whether that sort of happens concurrently. So, you know, you do have more place-based groups that then together might connect into that, the bigger global network. And then it might be, you know, opportunities as well for, 
um, those different groups to lead conversations or, or lead things that, that that might sort of be you know shared in, in the broader group. Um, and I think that's a good way to, to for some people to also connect in person um, rather than you know so it, it's not just the uh, online sort of thing and then you can work together and there isn't as much sort of you know responsibility on say one person leading leading something you can do it a bit more collectively with with a group. Thanks, Rama. I think that makes a lot of sense. And, and, and the hope by having different kind of regional leads, both as faculty and students, um, is that that can kind of happen regionally. Like I have a lot of ideas of how to, to integrate this in Canada and how we, we only have two programs in Canada. We're both represented on the grant. How can we use this to inform, you know, student training and relationality across the region and building up our own kind of critical orientation in the literature in Canada. Um, and that the hope with that would be also happening elsewhere. And, you know, maybe post COVID we get, we all get together <laughs> and we're able to continue to build this at future conferences and, and some of those face-to-face -face opportunities. Um, sorry, at risk of talking again. Um, another idea which we floated in Australia for a few years now, but just never had the time to get, get it together, was a concept called two psychologists walk into a bar or three psychologists walk into a bar. And it's, it's, it's a, um, a meeting of community psychologists with other types of psychologists, like clinical psychologists and neuropsychologists, because I'm not sure what it's like in other nations, but in Australia, there's lots of um, petty territorial contesting between say clinical psychologists and counseling and community psychologists and what we were trying to do with that concept was draw the draw bridges across different forms of psychology to help each other understand how we all have a role and we can we can uh, community psychologists can be really beneficial in the in the worlds of other psychologists so I just sort of flagged that idea if, in case that could be a theme that, that could develop through this too there's 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 a conversation there that Peter Streak is gonna lead. <laughs> I'll, I'll shout the drinks the first round anyway. <laughs> I like that as a name for a podcast. Three psychologists walk into a bar. <laughs> we want to be engaging. Want to be you know accessible to the, the broader community, but. Uh, are there any students on the call who have any thoughts about what this um, could could look like for their participation or engagement or use of kind of relationality as you move through your student journey? Hi, yeah, uh, I'm a PhD student based in Ireland, but at the moment, I think I think like some another one person commented. Uh, I'm just listening to ideas and absorbing for the moment. Um, I don't really have any anything to contribute as such for now, but it just sounds like a really great network and yeah, a great idea. Thanks, Megan. In between eating mouthfuls of cereal, excuse me. Um, <laughs> uh, it, I'm, I'm putting together uh, some words that I've been uh, asked by Christopher to do at the closing today, but I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm struck by the, the, I guess for me, sometimes the critical, I guess the critical work can be the unsettling work and sometimes the isolating work. And so I think in a, in, in a lots of ways we're talking about those relational aspects um, become those really important supports as a, as a student, perhaps in more marginalised disciplines or, or fringe disciplines or however we want to think about those things. So I think some of that connecting, certainly for me, has been really, really important to know that there is a, you know, your, your people or your, however you want to think about that. Maybe I'll speak to one of the things that I think kind of started maybe indirectly these conversations that, that Chris and I were having was, you know, when I was starting my faculty job, I was trying to course prep, I was trying to build good graduate level and, and undergraduate level courses that were, you know, representing diverse perspectives and diverse community psychologists and diverse critical community psychologists and trying to find that literature, trying to find, you know, 
diverse voices on empowerment or, you know, really any of our, you know, quote unquote, core theories of community psychology, if you're looking in only kind of the canon of the global north, um, is quite challenging. And so I was having these conversations at the last Scraw conference, like, who are you citing? Where am I? What am I missing? Um, and just in the few conversations that we've had with our partners leading up to this, it has like unraveled like a all of these places to look and these names of scholars that I that I've never heard of before because they're not we're not all publishing in the same place we're not all publishing in the same language we're not you know and so it was really kind of exciting to say like oh it's not that it's not there it's that I'm wearing my very like white North American blinders to what is happening in our field in these really interesting and wonderful ways um, and there are all these conversations happening out there that if we could be talking to each other, perhaps we could be moving some of our theory and practice forward in a more intentional and connected way. So it started for me as just like a, I want to know more, <laughs> to realizing that there just was so much more out there to know and that we could all find these really interesting ways to, to connect. And hopefully that will make our teaching, you know, more grounded and in, in some of these really interesting theoretical and, and practical advancements, but also our relationships and our conferences and you know, how can we, how can we have these conversations? So we started to kind of pivot towards this digital media stuff, but it really came from a true want and need for, for those relationships and those connections to, to learn from each other. I think Monica has made a comment there too, which, which I think is a really important um, sort of statement too, I guess, um, in terms of uh, how might this, um, I mean, instead of calling things gray literature now, and I know that what is it, APA 7th, they allow us to cite um, uh, YouTube and all sorts of other things now that, that we actually have a, a chance here to, to honor all the contribution, contributors' voices, I think, into that um, knowledge production process. And, and, and so this, this sort of, these, te these technologies, I think, is a, a great opportunity to also then enact some of those values that we that we espouse, I think, in the critical community psychology space. Yeah, Natalie, I just wanted to reiterate, yes, exactly, that we had a, house, a, a session at the Biennial when we hosted it last that was exactly about this issue. How do we get more connected to the, to the re other areas of the globe that are experiencing similar kinds of issues and questions? And um, I think it was our connection to the international conference in South Africa that really got us even more curious. And then in, in developing our curriculum as faculty, we really wanted to know, you know, what are all these other authors that we're missing? You know, the blinders idea is a real thing. And, you know, how do we get outside of this? And I think that's actually how I met Chris, you know, I was like, hey, Chris, how do I find more literature in these other spaces? And um, so it's really great that you guys are doing this. Thank you. And I think just so that I don't forget to say this, um, though Chris maybe has everyone's contact information, I'm going to put my um, contact information over there because I'm seeing Gordon wants to, to share some resources and Gordon and I would love to do that. So if you want to be kind of notified, though we will likely still spam, I don't know, anyone we can think of when we start these global gatherings in the new year, but if you want to stay involved or you want to, to be a part of this as we launch it, do send me an email and we'll make sure to kind of build a list as we as we get started, because we'll likely be pulling together our first kind of gathering, whatever that will look like um, in the first quarter of the new year. Thanks for coming, Monica. See you soon. Monica has to go and prepare for our next talk. It's very early in the morning for Monica too, isn't it? Yes. Uh, I might just, just kind of say, I think this is really good opportunity also. And um, yeah, it's to see the faces in the room. And I kind of love the idea of, you know, breakfast in Melbourne and dinner in, you know, <laughs> in Canada and such. There's something about that in itself, isn't there? Um, <clears throat> that's my deep morning voice happening here. I can feel it. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. And I also was picking up on, I mean, Peter's uh, notion of, looking at other areas of psychology that, um, you know, how does critical psychology play out in a clinical context, whereas here we're talking about community. And I guess it would also, I mean, we, we don't need to draw those lines. And I know that we're not only talking about psychology, but 
it is very interesting. There's a um, a Facebook group of of um, um, probably mostly small C and capital C clinical psychologists in Sydney that have a Facebook page called Psychologists for Social Justice. They started calling it, um, what was it, Decolonising Clinical Psychology. And then they were challenged about the word clinical because there's a huge clinical hegemony in Australia and, and elsewhere, but here particularly because they actually get paid more than any other kind of psychologist in practice. So that has led to some very bitter divisions. So some of the counselling psychologist challenge was, well, that's a contradiction in terms, decolonising clinical psychology. So they dropped the clinical psychology and then somebody said, well, what right have we to use the term decolonising? This is not really a very multiracial group, a very um, mixed, you know, like, like are we just wanting, is it virtue signalling to, to, to use that term? So they acknowledged that it probably was, almost didn't really have the, the credentials to use that term and it was going to be about more than decolonization anyway. So then they turned it into psychologists for social justice. But some of their conversations, uh, they sort of overlap with these and sometimes they're very different um, because of the focus on, um, well, on practice and on therapy and such, but also trying to put that in much bigger contexts around uh, Craig. I'd love to have David Fry come in and be a, a, a a, you know, a discussant within that group because his challenges to the whole, you know, psych complex. And I, I think some of those people might have difficulty with it, but um, probably do from time to time. Anyway, um, that, that's just my sort of saying that there are this kind of like, again, Venn diagrams are overlaps between psychology, clinical psychology, community critical. And it would be good, particularly for those of us who probably, for a lot of people who haven't. Uh, it, people have different ideas of what critical psychology or is, uh, let alone what critical community psychology might mean. And I guess this is a way of operationalizing it a bit. So I'm keen to hear what it means to people in their own context. That's it from our meeting again. It's really great, Heather. Um, and good to see everybody. And I think that uh, question is particularly important. Um, uh, at least I'm noticing a lot in the in the United States context where um, there's a good bit of resistance to you know um, you know calling something critical community psychology and um, and so I'm just wondering how that plays out kind of around the world. You know how how it sits alongside either traditional forms of psychology or even community psychology. You know. I think you know we've written about this idea that isn't all community psychology critical, and obviously not. Um, but I think there's um, some some uh, urgency to to operationalize it, like Heather said, and and to um, talk about the distinctions that are made in the discipline within the discipline, kind of around the world, just so that we can kind of understand um, each other's uh, kind of struggles and challenges with. Um, either incorporated into the discipline more broadly or feeling like, uh, I think it was uh, the same, we said like feeling marginalized within the discipline. Uh, some of us feel more marginalized than others, perhaps, uh, depending on the, um, the, the country and, and cultural context. And at one time when we were talking to Todd Sloan early on, Chris might remember this, Natalie, we were thinking like you know, this, this thing that we were trying to build this interest group related to critical community psychology, should it even be you know, under the umbrella of a scraw, you know, even thinking that um, for some reason it just didn't feel um, feel like the right home. So, but that was that was a few years ago. We are still having that internal struggle, and I am very interested, either privately or here, to to hear what people think because this these aren't the faces that are you know in that that group. Though Chris and I should admit we haven't held a meeting in a while, but we will. Um, you know, so we do see different people that come to that, that group and, and, you know, can it just be a, one of the funnels of finding people to, to bring somewhere else where we're, we're truly kind of creating a global space that, that we feel ownership over and it's for us. Um, because if we close that door, we might miss out on a group of people as well, but it's definitely not the only place and the only platform that we want to be thinking about to, to organize our discipline. Can I just, I just, um, stumbled yesterday when I was tweeting, I think, um, over the on the APA um, statement about the election. 
And no, it must was LinkedIn actually, which I don't go to very often. And I was a bit shocked. I probably shouldn't be at the fierce debate on the APA page around, you know, you know, the people coming from the conspiracy angle right through to the, you know, Black Lives Matter and everywhere in between. And I mean, diversity, that, that's fine. But I was a bit shocked to hear so many um, psychologists, psychology, academics, et cetera, actually um, taking a stance that I, I would have a great difficulty encompassing. And so, so I think that, I guess I'm thinking that, um, yeah, the US is a very different space from um, lots of other places in that regard, but also that there's plenty of it happening here too. And uh, it is a great opportunity to both turn the lens on your own practices and your own thinking, but also open yourself up to the fact that not everybody thinks the same way. Um, and and be, yeah, I guess I'm, I was just I was just a bit shocked, and I'm still debriefing myself on that on that experience. <laughs> Thanks, Heather. And I mean, I couldn't, couldn't agree more. Um, and I think there's even a conversation happening in at least the kind of scraw realm of community psychology on whether that harm is also happening within community psychology, right? We like to look elsewhere and, and, and imagine that we are above, you know, enacting issues of structural racism. And, and, you know, so there's been some real public calls around that and scraw and some, some response, some that's more performative and some that is potentially a, a bit deeper. Um, so lot, lots of work to do in our own scholarly homes, um, at least for those of us in the, the global north. Um, Rama put together a Google Doc. If anyone wants to go to the chat and drop your um, contact information in there. Thanks, Rama. I really appreciate that. Um, you know, this is, I think, the be well, it isn't even the beginning. This is probably step 32 of a thousand because this work has been going on and people have been in, in wonderful deep relationships, which is obvious based on how easy it was almost to pull together a lot of these partners because I think everyone already knows and loves Chris. Chris is somehow the center of so much of this. <laughs> and I'm very grateful to him and his his networks and relationships to be able to pull some of this together and 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 start to have these conversations. So I think that there's, you know, lots of good stuff to come. Um, in the next year or so. Did anyone have any kind of closing thoughts? We didn't, we never will have enough time to have all these wonderful conversations, even with all of our global gatherings, but any, anything else that, that, oh, I did want to come back to the fact that there was a couple of questions over here, actually. Um, so the, the first one um, from Edward around, um, you know, can we be doing some, some work around Indigenous, um, grounding, I guess, in, in the field. So I, I don't have, you know, a broad answer to that, except for that one of the proposed episodes in our very flexible proposed episodes was going to be with um, Paula Bala from Australia and Mohirua from New Zealand and Anne-Marie Beals from Canada to have a really kind of in rich conversation about Indigenous community psychologies across different contexts and the ways in which we can kind of learn from people's practices and, and histories. Um, so that's something that can be built out significantly. Um, there was for sure a push from some of our partners to ensure that we were centering Indigenous voices and Indigenous knowledge in this. Um, and in Canadian context, at least for one, that has not been um, a core component of community psychology and it is a huge critique of any kind of critically oriented community psychology up here. Um, so it's, it's something we want to learn from places and folks who are already doing a lot of that great work. Yeah, and that's, that's, that I just wanted to add, sorry, Natalie, just to, yeah, I think uh, Ed, Edward's comment is, is really important. It made me think of Raywan Connell's sort of um, uh, opening statement where, where she talked about, instead of talking about Western, it talked about imperial uh, knowledge formations. And I think what Ed, Ed, Eduardo point, or Edward points out there too is maybe, uh, that, that this is this is sort of decentering or providing sets of resources too. It's not not like there isn't um, resources already, but I think we're bringing it into a, an, another sort of space and through another uh, sort of uh, disciplinary uh, lens as well. And I, I mean, I, I mean, we we can also have um, for some in some ways we have to have some sort of uh, things that that that, that borders it, even though we don't we don't want to have borders. Otherwise, it can be everything and and anything and then also nothing. Um, so there's, 
There's go and I think people might say, well, we can't call it critical community. So it's not a term that works for us in South America. They might talk about community social, and it resonates with um, what what we are are talking about. So it, it becomes a place where we will capture or hope to capture some of the sort of I mean, the the, the diversity. But but I think it is like you said at the outset too. It is about um, looking look, looking from another place um, as well. And if you want to center the, the voices that aren't at the center right now, um, how might we do that? But what does that actually do then in terms of shifting things? So I think there's a broader sort of um, uh, set of things that we 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 hope uh, speaks to. I think some of the themes that have been raised at this conference, even even now, about I mean, what is this uh, what is this unsettling that is happening right now? And how do we respond to this sort of un unsettling um, as well in in sort of a generative sort of, in generative ways I, I guess and we're hoping that that I mean that, that there's this uh, like Peter said maybe I mean we've we brought in the global networking a bit earlier by virtue of the fact that we've we've been forced into it <laughs> with with everything that's that's happened but it's been it's been really good that, that we are able to do that um, I think so so I think I'm really I mean really optimistic and um, uh, and uh, encouraged by the the fact that we'd be able to have these sorts of conversations, and it's and it is about um, I think recognizing that the differences are different contexts, are different politics, are different cultural spaces, the different politics around psychology in the place in in our different places um, as well. So um, so it's a project it's a project in the making, I guess, and 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 it will it will change and and transform too, um, just like most things do. Um, I hope. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Chris. And, and I think just briefly to answer the last couple of questions, yes and yes. I don't know if anyone's looking at the questions, but yes to um, PETA about a virtual library that is going to be hopefully a piece that's, that's built in um, pretty significantly with how much graduate student um, work there will be is to kind of pull that together because we're finding it's a lot easier to find it in some places like the Australian um, journal because there's like an Australian community psych journal versus if you look in South Africa it's kind of interwoven into a broader psychological journal so like how can we really start to pull out the work that's happening and put it in a centralized place like what Todd was doing um, and then the other piece about um, Tiffany saying can we develop a global knowledge course yes please um, and hopefully lots of wonderful things will come out of this conference, this particular project, the relationships we've all been building and will continue to build. I think that that would be incredible um, to, to think about different outputs that are really tangible in terms of continuing this conversation beyond just, you know, one cohort of students or one year of funding, but what is kind of a sustainable ongoing output that can, can have some real impact. I think we're out of time. Yep. Okay. Um, we all have to get to the the lovely panel that is to come that I'm so excited about. So thank you all for for coming today. We will for sure keep you posted about the grant, but either way, you'll you'll be hearing from us if your information is in the Google Doc that Rama made. And uh, otherwise, we'll see you soon.